Hey, I'm Mandy from Deep Lizard. In this episode, we'll demonstrate how we can fine-tune a pre-trained model to classify images using TensorFlow's Keras API. The pre-trained model that we'll be working with is called VGG16, and this is the model that won the 2014 ImageNet competition. In the ImageNet competition, multiple teams compete against each other to build a model that best classifies images within the ImageNet library. And the ImageNet library is made up of thousands of images that belong to 1,000 different classes. Using Keras, we'll import this VGG16 model and then fine tune it to not classify on one of the 1,000 categories for which it was originally trained, but instead only on two categories, cat and dog. Note, however, that cats and dogs were included in the original ImageNet library for which VGG16 was trained on. And because of this, we won't have to do much tuning to change the model from classifying from 1,000 classes to just the two cat and dog classes. So the overall fine tuning that we'll do will be very minimal. In later episodes, though, we'll do more involved fine tuning and use transfer learning to transfer what a model has learned on an original data set to completely new data in a new custom data set that we'll be using later. To understand fine tuning and transfer learning at a fundamental level, check out the corresponding episode for fine tuning in the Deep Learning Fundamentals course on deeplizard.com. Before we actually start building our model, let's quickly talk about the VGG16 pre-processing that is done. Now, recall, we are here in our Jupyter Notebook. This is from last time when we plotted a batch from our test data set. And a few episodes ago, we discussed the fact that this color data was skewed as a result of the VGG16 preprocessing function that we were calling. Well, now we're going to discuss what exactly this preprocessing does. So as we can see, we can still make out the images as these here being all cats, but it's just the data, the color data itself that appears to be distorted. So if we look at the paper that the authors of VGG16 detailed the model in, uh, under the architecture section, let's blow this up a bit, we can see that they state that the only preprocessing we do is subtract the mean RGB value computing on the computed on the training set from each pixel. So what does that mean? That means that they computed the mean red value pixel from all of the training data. And then once they had that mean value across each image in the training set, they subtracted that mean value from the red value, the red pixel, each pixel in the image. And then they did the same thing for the green and blue pixel values as well. So they found the, green pix uh, the mean green pixel value among the entire training set. And then for each sample in the training set, every green pixel, they subtracted that green value from it. So, and same thing for the blue, of course. So that's what they did for the pre-processing. So given that that's how VGG16 was originally trained, that means now whenever new data is passed to the model, that it needs to be processed in the same exact way as the original training set. So Keras already has functions built in for popular models like VGG16, where they have that pre-processing in place that matches for the corresponding model. So that's why we were calling that model whenever we process our cat and dog images earlier so that we could go ahead and get those images processed in such a way that matched how the original training set was processed when VGG was originally trained. All right, so that is what that color distortion is all about. So now let's jump back into the code. Now that we know what that's about, we have an understanding of the pre-processing now. Let's now get back to actually building the fine-tuned model. So the first thing that we need to do is download the model. And when you call this for the first time, you will need an internet connection because it's going to be downloading the model from the internet. But after this, uh, su subsequent calls to this function will just be grabbing this model from the downloaded copy on your machine. All right, so the model's been downloaded. Now we are just running this summary and we can see that this model is much more complex than what we have worked with up to this point. So total, there are 
almost 140 million parameters in this model. And on disk, it is over 500 megabytes. So it is quite large. Now recall I said that this VGG16 model originally was predicting for 1000 different ImageNet classes. So here we can see our output layer of the VGG16 model has 1000 different outputs. So our objective is going to simply be to change this uh, last output layer to predict only two output classes corresponding to cat and dog, uh, along with a couple other details regarding the fine tuning process that we'll get to in just a moment. So now we're actually going to just skip uh, these two cells here. These are just for me uh, to be able to make sure that I've imported the model correctly, but it is not relevant for any code here. It's just checking that the trainable parameters and non-trainable parameters are what I expect them to be after importing, but this is uh, not of concern at the moment for us. So if we scroll down here, we're now going to build a new model called sequential. All right, now before we run this code, we're actually just going to look at the type of model this is. So this is returning a model called model. So this is actually a model from the Keras functional API. We have been previously working with sequential models. So we are in a later episode going to discuss the functional API in depth. It's a bit more complicated and more sophisticated than the sequential model. For now, since we're not ready to bring in the functional model yet, we are going to convert the original VGG16 model into a sequential model. And we're going to do that by creating a new variable called model here and setting this equal to an instance of a sequential object. And we are going to then loop through every layer in VGG16, except for the last output layer, we're leaving that out. We're going to loop through every layer and then add each layer into our new sequential model. So now we'll look at a summary of our new model. And by looking at this summary, if you take the time to uh, compare the previous summary to this summary, what you will notice is that they are exactly the same, except for the last layer has been not included in this new model. So this layer here, we have this fully connected to layer is what this is here um, with the output shape of 4096 here. If we scroll back up, we can see that this is this layer here. So the predictions layer has not been included because when we were iterating over our for loop, we went all the way up to the second to last layer. We did not include the last layer of VGG16. All right, so now let's scroll back down and we're now going to iterate over all of the layers within our new sequential model. And we are going to set each of these layers to not be trainable by setting layer.trainable to false. And what this is going to do is going to freeze the trainable parameters or the weights and biases from all the layers in the model so that they're not going to be retrained whenever we go through the training process for cats and dogs. Because VGG16 has already learned features of cats and dogs in its original training, we don't want it to have to go through more training again since it's already learned those features. So that's why we are freezing the weights here. We're now going to add our own output layer to this model. So remember, we removed the previous output layer that had 10 output or that had 1000 output classes rather. And now we are going to add our own output layer that has only two output classes for cat and dog. So we add that. Now, since we have set all of the previous layers to not be trainable, we can see that actually only our last output layer, that's going to be the only trainable layer in the entire model. And like I said before, that's because we already know that VGG16 has already learned the features of cats and dogs during its original training. So we only need to retrain this output layer to classify two output classes. So now if we look at a new summary of our model, then we'll see that everything is the same, except for now we have this new dense layer as our output layer, which only has two classes instead of 1000 from the original uh, VGG16 model. 
We can also see that our model now only has 8,000 trainable parameters, and those are all within our output layer. As I said, that our output layer is our only trainable layer. So before, actually, all of our layers were trainable. If we go take a look at our original VGG16 model, we see that we have 138 million total parameters, all of which are trainable, none of which are non-trainable. So if we didn't freeze those layers, then they would be getting retrained during the training process for our cat and dog images. So just to scroll back down again and check this out, we can see that now we still have uh, quite a bit of learnable parameter or of total parameters, 134 million, but only 8,000 of which are trainable. The rest are non-trainable. In the next episode, we'll see how we can train this modified model on our images of cats and dogs. By the way, we are currently in Vietnam filming this episode. If you didn't know, we also have a vlog channel where we document our travels and share a little bit more about ourselves. So check that out at the Blizzard Vlog on YouTube. Also, be sure to check out the corresponding blog for this episode, along with other resources available on deeblizzard.com. And check out the Deep Blizzard Hive Mind, where you can gain exclusive access to perks and rewards. Thanks for contributing to Collective Intelligence. I'll see you next time.